Let's watch a full length movie on YouTube with Mike Spiegelman. Let's watch a full length movie on YouTube with Mike Spiegelman. It's been over one long year Watching movies bad, strange and weird Commandeer By Michael Hi, this is Carl I, I'm Mike's friend I, I wrote this song My turn on are French poodles Chinese German strudels. Oh, you should follow me on Twitter. It's Jokes to Carl. Uh, that's the French duh, not the. Oh, <laughs> now let's watch but a full length clever. movie on YouTube with Michael. Michael. And then I woke up. Let's watch a full-length movie on YouTube with Mike Spiegelman and Carl. Carl, how are you? All right, good. Good to hear your voice, Mike. Good to hear your voice, Carl. Uh, listeners of the show, good to have Carl back. Uh, sorry for the annoying buzz on last week's episode. Mm. So now it's been noted. Uh, we have a great show. We want you to listen. We watch a full-length movie on YouTube uh, with you. And the idea is that you watch it on YouTube and listen to our podcast at the same time. And switch uh, audio. Although this today's movie is a silent movie, so you're going to have nothing to do but listen to us. And uh, just a quick shout out. We're on live, mutinyradio.fm, every Sunday, 2 to 4 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, 5 p.m. Eastern Time. You can find us then and post on iTunes. Uh, at L-W-A-F-L-N-O-Y-T is the name of our feed, and that's also available at mutinyradio.fm or anywhere you find your podcasts. We're going to be on Stitcher soon, I say, uh, optimistically. But go to our blog spot. It's called Let's Watch a Full-Length Movie on YouTube.blogspot.com, and you'll see the movie and the podcast both posted with a little write-up, and you can experience it that way. And Carl has been running uh, our YouTube ch uh, channel, L-W-A-F-L-M-O-Y-T, which uh, mixes the two for you. So take a, take a subscribe to that channel, goddammit. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, hi, Carl. I, I've been very informable, informal about that channel, and I'm sorry about that. No, 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 no. Uh, no it's, it's, I don't it's, always post, but... Legally, it's kind of shady. So, uh, you know what? We'll enjoy it while we can. Gotcha. Yeah. Uh, so we are going to watch a full-length movie on YouTube. So uh, however you watch your YouTube, go ahead to that platform and get on YouTube. Carl, what's our movie today? Oh, by the way, here's the premise of our show. I pick a movie. I don't watch it. Carl watches it. He researches it. And then we all watch it together. Right. And that has happened once again. And you picked another good one. Oh, good. Um, it is called His Majesty, comma, The Scarecrow of Oz. Open parentheses, 1914, close parentheses. And this is not um, The Wizard of Oz done earlier. It's its own story. Okay. Uh, written by L. Frank Baum uh, the, uh, himself. Ah. Uh. Yeah, and this is not, um, I already said it before, many people think, okay, well, there was Wizard of Oz, and then there must have been some earlier black and white film silent movies that tried to do the same thing. No, this is its own film. Okay. And also, it was not an adaptation of one of his books. He wrote this screenplay straight up. That... And then later, one year later, the themes and characters and stories of this movie ended up in a book. Wow. No shit. Yeah. The Scarecrow of Oz, 1915, that was written wow. and came out. And by the way, the, the title of this movie came from his refrigerator magnets. What? His, his Majesty, Majesty the, the Scarecrow Scare of Oz? Gee. That was written by Yoda. Uh, Yoda. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Oh, Frank Oz? No, yeah, it was written by Frank Oz. Yeah, right. Because it's a <laughs> fucking awkward <laughs> phrase. 
All right, so uh, if you enjoy these jokes, well, we have two more hours of them as Carl and I will uh, talk over the movie and uh, riff and reminisce. And you got uh, a lot of notes, and I have my Oz trivia book, which has a lot Uh of scarecrow quotes and a lot of weird shit, because Oz is weird. All right, so let's go ahead and uh, you said this. Now, which version uh, will we be watching today? We are watching, um, okay, once again, it's His Majesty, comma, The Scarecrow of Oz, uh, parentheses, 1914, close parentheses. Okay. Um, it only has 770 views, of which I am three of them. It is Change Before Going Productions. All right. Cha- May tw- yeah. Okay, so Change Before Going Productions is the uh, YouTube channel that is hosting the version we are watching. Right. Uh Okay, so let's go ahead and click uh, the link and then hit pause while it buffers. Mike, do you see the logo that Change Before Going Productions is using? Uh, yeah, it, it looks like CBGB's, but it's CBGP. Right. Now, for all you uncool San Francisco people, right, you don't know, already. like me and Mike, the hip East Coast dude. Uh-huh. That's CBGB's right there. Um and look what he did. He just took the B, C, D, G, B, and made it a P with some blackout. There's a, uh, a dispensary in Berkeley that also plays with that in Berkeley, California. That's uh-huh. like the community Berkeley, Berkeley community pots, pot, or whatever. And they use the CBGBs because their lettering is also the same. So, yeah, mm-hmm. I'm all for that. Okay, so I think we've covered the gamut about Oz, so let's go ahead. Uh, this is a 58-minute movie, and we have a little surprise at the end. Uh, but in the meanwhile, we are going to... Oh, and by the way, we're doing a new feature at the end of this podcast before we start our movie. At the end of the podcast, I'll tell Carl what the next movie is. So, Great. Yeah, which I do. I have a movie all set up for next week. So, for God, see, now you have to listen to the entire podcast so <laughs> go ahead by this point you should have your cursor uh, hovering over the play uh icon of the video his majesty the scarecrow of oz uh carl once you do the countdown and when you say go we will hit play and we'll watch this in unison okay i'm try beer. okay i'm gonna go three two one go all right three two one play all right Whoa. Now, right away, you see a woman, right? With her. Yeah. She's grinning. That's uh, who? Gilda? Glenda? Google? That is the woman who plays Dorothy in our, um, in our film. That's Dorothy? And she, her name is Violet McMillan. MacMillan. Violet McMillan. There she is as yeah. the first one, Dorothy Gale. Uh, Frank Moore. Dor- see, so these this are all the characters all the- from the, all the books, like Old yeah. Mumbai. It was a big well, deal. that is the Wicked Witch of. King Cruel, by the way, was in Donkey Kong Country. He was the, uh, <laughs> the final boss. And he was, so, he was a pretty cruel crocodile. Okay, now that's King Cruel. Oh, and yeah. there you can see yeah. uh, the woman who's got droopy boobs. Yes, droopy that boobs. That is Gloria. It's his niece. Does... And he's talking to a guy named Googly Goo. <laughs> Who later created yeah. Google. And Googly Goo is saying, listen, King, I'll give you all these jewels and such if you let me marry your niece. That's a good deal. King Cruel's all about it. Yeah. I mean, you get a le- your niece leaves and you get a bunch of jewels. I mean, what's the catch? Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's a win-win. It's a win-win. This is called Oz Negotiations. Now, I'll tell you. He's been, reject- he's been rejected. Hey, anyone here from Oz? Anyone here from Oz? <laughs> Marriage is crazy, am I right? <laughs> Next thing you know it, your uncle's selling you off for a bunch of jewelry. I'm working on some material. I'm going to go on the road. See, there he's admiring his jewelry. Now, why should a king want jewelry? He's got all the wealth of a nation. What's uh, okay, so, a couple more bobbles? So now they're at a rodeo. Well, he looks like it, right? This is two people who will never, never meet again. They are going into the cornfield, and they're going to erect a scarecrow. Now, this is the cornfield of Oz? Yeah, we are in Oz. There's no Kansas up front. Right. Dorothy will appear, and she's from Kansas, but you don't know that from the screenplay. So they're spending a lot of time with the penis. I mean, Look this how crow, washed out it is. 
Yeah, I know. It's. I mean, this is 1914, uh, so. It's remarkable. Well, it, it, could, it didn't always look like this. It, it needs a restoration. Yeah. Um, no one's going to do that. No one is going to do that. Now, this, this film has a tragic history. It was lost. Uh, at least the first reel was lost for a long time. And all the interstitials, like this thing that we're looking at now, yeah. that was lost. This is a reproduction made in the 1960s. Okay, here's a plot point now. Gloria has wandered off because she's in love with that dude, the gardener's son. His name is Pawn, P-O-N. Oh. Sure. No, I've seen these movies. Is he going to get all porno on us? No, no. Oh. All right, well, so that's the end of the show. So this is the first time that she's revealing her love for Pawn. There's King Cruel <gasps> in the background. Whoa, what is this? Whoa, oh, no, How can they don't. not notice that guy? He's like, go eat my burgers. Have a, I'll whopper you. For Burger King. Yeah, does good. he look like the king? Get Google your nugget Google. ass out of here. Uh, God, it is now, totally washed out. Right, it really is. But, and but there's it, more to the restoration that's required. See how it says the lovers are surprised by King Cruel? Yeah. That comes after, right? But So by lovers, that means they actually... Do it in Oz, right? Uh, they I make love. You can't be a lover unless you make love. You know that, right? Uh, that might be our rules on this side. They might just love each other and they're lovers. Are you saying the rules of love are different in the land of Oz? Listen, I'm a lover of fine wines. I never put my dick in one. <laughs> you should, man. That's why they have the bottle <laughs> like that. It's all uh, stingy. Yeah. Okay, now. What we're seeing right now is a scene that we just saw a minute ago. Oh, okay. The two are, are like, you know, getting together, and then the king oversees them and takes action. Like, I don't understand the director of the film, the writer, why show it twice? Well, the writer is the guy, the guy who actually wrote Oz. Frank Baum. L. Frank Baum. L. Frank Baum. Yeah. Do you ever stick your dick in a bottle of whiskey? Oh, I'm a whiskey lover. Yeah. Love yeah. whiskey. You get to the downside is you get whiskey dick. I um, I basically spent most of my time uh, screwing the Kahlua. That way, when I got a, uh, when I got a, <laughs> when I got a Caucasian, I didn't need to add milk. All right. <laughs> <laughs> so when I got okay, okay. Here's right. our scarecrow, right? Yes. And now what we're seeing is... Magical harpies. Um, Children of the corn. Hey, Dorothy, okay. little Kansas girl, is really captured and enslaved by the Wicked Witch. Right. That's a bummer. Now, okay, here comes Dorothy, and somehow she's in the land of Oz. We have no backstory. We don't know anything about a tornado. Right. She's just here. Well, and yeah. as soon as she arrives, and she's all distraught, like... Where am I? What's going on? The Wicked Witch shows up immediately and is like, you're going to do chores for me. Well, you know, it, what's <laughs> remarkable, too, is that uh, uh, she's been to Oz before. You know, and they say, really? And she's like, yeah, I have a life, you know, before this. Right. What? She's been done? She's been what? All right, never mind. I was trying to make a joke that she's well-traveled before this. Like, uh, never mind. She's no virgin. Okay, so now the witch has grabbed her. That witch took like 10 minutes to sneak up to her. <laughs> yeah. And this is Mumbai, the witch. And she she's like, oh, no. Right. Oh, like as if she couldn't get away, right? So you're going to come home and you're going to sweep up and mop. Okay. So, and so, this is not the Wicked Witch of the West. This is old Mumbai, the witch. Yeah, yeah. It's. I don't know if she's the Wicked Witch of the West or the Good Witch of the East. I don't know. Um, you see the stereotypical Native American costume here, the Hollywood Indian. Right. Uh, it's bringing to life the Scarecrow. So there was indigenous people of Oz. They're the indigenous people of Oz. Yeah, see, how does that make sense? People from the you know West, People from North America live in Oz with feathers, and it doesn't make sense. Oh, my God, he's this alive. Is, she is the spirit of the corn. She's the spirit of the corn. Yeah. 
Her dance is making the scarecrow turn alive. Right. She's making the scarecrow come alive. Why, though? For what reason? To protect that corn. It had, there is no, we'll never. Okay, so here King Cruel is saying, look, I'm freaking serious. And she goes, no, I love pawn. So what Cruel's going to do is he's going to go to the Wicked Witch and say, can you make her not love pawn? And the witch is going to say, of course. I'll just freeze the heart. <laughs> now, here is May Wells, the Wicked Witch, Mumbai, and she's teaching Dorothy, okay, yes, I'm going to wash your clothes as if she washes her clothes. King Kroll visits Mom by the Witch to ask her to destroy Don't. Gloria's love for Pond. Huh. So, old Mom by, I'm trying to look. I have this book. It's called All Things Oz. And it's kind of like a, a toilet coffee table book where you either sit by a coffee table or the toilet and read mm-hmm. just a couple pages at a time. And I'm trying to find, like, Mom by in here. There's a lot of weird characters, right? There's that doodle yeah. bug. There's the... Uh, Googly goo goo, of course. But not, not a lot that's in. Hey, oh, hey Carl, I, I'll tell you my beef. By the way, our, our uh, good friend Paul Brumbaugh is here and he's fixing our sound. So we don't really know nice. how bad the sound quality is right now. So I do apologize up front Sorry. if there's like crazy buzzing going on. But I'm going to assume not. But this movie came out in 1914. Right. 99 years later, Oz the Great and Powerful came out, a Disney film. Uh, and it was the prequel to Wizard of Oz from 1939, and it was all about the guy, Oz. Mm-hmm. But even in this original, the hero is a woman. You know, right. like, yeah. Oz, the women are heroes. And in that That's Oz right. prequel from Disney, it was all about Oz. It was all about the, the wizard. It was all about the guy yeah. and the women that fall in love with them. So it's like, that's not even a real prequel. The prequel to the actual movie is this film we're watching, which is still Dorothy. Yeah, that's right. And it's written by the guy who wrote all the books. I mean, yeah. that was not... The Disney one was, you know, hijacking. Disney always does that, right? Yeah. They took Pocahontas, who was like half West, half East, and turned her into like a stereotypical Indian goddess. Did you ever see pictures of Pocahontas? Man, she was ugly. <laughs> Oh, I'll, okay. don't get me started. I want to tell you what's... Oh, yeah, go ahead. Okay, so do, do, uh, when the king comes in, Mumbai is like, Dorothy, you freaking wait outside, girl. And when Dorothy steps outside... Now, remember, she was just kidnapped like 15 minutes ago. What would you do, Mike? Wouldn't you run the hell away, right? But no, Dorothy meets Pawn and's like, hey, let's see what's going on inside. You know, it's kind of nonsensical. Uh, by the way, Gloria has no brassiere, and I'm loving it. We're, uh, Carl, there's a major buzz going out to the broadcast that we're just trying to work on while, while we're watching this movie. The, so. the major buzz right now is the new Thor. The new uh, Thor, Rangor. yeah, Thararak. Rangor. You know what's great about Thor is that they really allowed the characters, the actors to improvise. And then they said, we're not using any of those cuts. This is a fucking industry. <laughs> we're not, we don't need, we don't need your jokes. We just need Thor running around. Right. Hulk. Don't be a thorn, Thor. Yeah, don't be a thorn in our side. I don't think that would work. Uh, all right, cool. So they all, I, I like the scenery. I like their houses. They shot this mm-hmm. in Oakland Fairyland, I think. Now look, King Cruel doesn't even see that they're there. Doesn't hear them shuffling footsteps. He it's turns insane. around, he missed them. Well, because they're out There's of a lot they're of out of frame. Unrealistic stuff here. They're out of frame. That's why you can't see them. Now you see those streaky white things. Yeah. Yeah, they're gonna be our friends for a while. They're us. They used to them. There, there's Mike and Carl on your screen. Watching. Watching with you. We can't get enough. Okay, so. In order to do this incantation, uh, Mumbai must summon three witches. Why? I don't know. Somehow they each have an ingredient she needs. He's not a good storyteller, okay. Carl. That's why. She, poof, did you see? Yeah, he too. put in her first ingredient. 
What was it? What was the special effects? What do you think she put in that metal pot? Uh, oh, and there's a witch. And the 80s. Now, here are her three witches. You can see one's like a peasant girl with the broom. Uh, oh, the other nice. one's a traditional witch looking. Here, here's her feather. Right? Cool. They all wait for her feather. And boom! <laughs> They're all excited. Oh, yeah. Now, see the bat lady? She farts on it. Oh, yeah. Next the, ingredient. Can I tell you the names of those three witches? Yes, it's Inky, please. Blinky, and uh, Clyde. Inky, and something terrible fun. is going to happen to them. And they're going to become ghosts. Look, she fluffies again. She farts on it. Oh. Every time she does that. Now, in order for the incantation to work, they can't look like witches anymore. they got to look like hot chicks. Like so, poof. Poof, done. Hot chicks. One of them was a cat, right? Like in a black a cat bat. outfit? B-A-T, bat. Oh, a bat. She was a mm-hmm. bat girl. Here, get that prop and bring it over here. <laughs> oh, that, this culture weighs a ton with all this paper mache and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, Look, he's the stirring thing. up the air. But this is my favorite part of Oz. Why is he up so loud? Okay, now she's going to he's pour it younger. on no. Gloria. Yeah. And that makes her heart come out. She just change. poured soup on her breast. Now, you see it says Gloria's heart is frozen, but it does that before. Wow, look at those boobs. And she's asleep, too. Now's the chance. You know, I and many dentists feel now that she's unconscious. Yes. It's the chance to touch Touch her her boob. Yeah. Okay, so you see the heart. Yeah, that's her real heart. Oh, whoa. Yeah. Now she's going to flip it back in. What an actress she is, you know. Oh, yeah, she's a good actress. Yeah. Well, she had to stand there for 20 hours as they painstakingly painted the heart. Uh, <laughs> uh, she's happy. She, she, now, by the way, this is her audition over. reel. The, uh, by the way, the, hip, the hypnotic woman sleeping is her, is her uh, audition reel to be in Metropolis as the uh-huh. robot. Yeah, robot. good one. Yeah. All right, so boil, boil, foil in trouble. These pretty little harpies are uh, literally dancing well, around a, a cauldron. Yeah, now they're just- what is done as pretty girls. They're going back to being witches. Thank God. And that's a bat. Yeah. I like it. It's a bat in a, sl- in a blanket, a slanket. They are having a great time uh, doing the scene, these people. <laughs> I don't oh, know what's no, up. They're but really they didn't realize that Dorothy saw them transform back into witches. Okay, so now Dorothy finally gets the idea we should run away. I mean, I've just been enslaved. Right, and you just watched 15 minutes of witches running, singing around the cauldron. So it's after them. Now, the witches who had poofed there uh-huh. are going to fly away. It's a pretty cool effect. You don't even realize they're flying until they're halfway up into the sky. Well, two's got umbrellas, one's a bat, and one... No, two has broomsticks. One has an umbrella, and one's a bat. Uh-oh. Now, this donkey is like Dorothy's donkey. And he says, slow down, uh, slow down the witches. How many men are in that donkey, donkey suit? It's, a, it's, a, it's one guy, right? And he's hunched over? Yeah, his name is Frank Woodward. He's original got long furry. arms, so he's, he's not the original all furry. the way hunched over. You can see his balls coming out of the uh, costume. See, see them Whoa. fly away? Like, yeah, surprise! that's cool. Look, they got shadows and everything. Yeah. Now, the donkey is going to have a very funny scene now with Mumbai just slowing her down yep nothing to see here folks just a man in a donkey suit <laughs> circling around a lady old bag lady just another day in the city now there's Gloria she wandered out of the college now this is Dorothy's mule from Kansas um, and she's uh, <gasps> I think its name is Hank and I, the internet taught me that. It's from the other books. We wouldn't know that from this. You see how she makes, he makes her, her fall off and then she, he laughs? Yeah. A lot of character in this donkey. Come here. Come here, you. <laughs> She's like, oh, yeah. No, the donkey's no nudging his head over to the door. Like, come on. Come over here. You like donkey rides? Excuse me. Hey, He's smile saying, more. like, go follow them or something. Look he's at his say- ears. He controls the ears. 
You can now see, the donkey's like, oh, hard work is over, and he's phew. wiping. He's got to wipe his hoof off, his the brow off of his hoof. I like that donkey costume. You can clearly see the mesh where the guy's head is <laughs> <laughs> by the neck. Either that or got surgery or something, surviving uh, throat cancer. Well, so well, come. well. That's what I always say when it's a well. <laughs> That's my favorite joke. I say to my daughter, I say, hey, daughter, did you hear about the three holes in the ground? <laughs> well, well, well. Now, they just want some water, and now Pawn sees his love. And he's used to her going, oh, Pawn, I fawn over Pawn. But oh, that's But he doesn't pawn. get that reaction. Because she had a lobotomy? Yeah, she, went to she had a heart therapy. lobotomy. Oh, a heart lobotomy, right? Her heart is cold. Hot is hot and hot a bottomy. Feel my neck. Oh, mm. darling. I, uh, she's like, she has none of it. Dorothy, what are, Dorothy's like, what are you doing? Yeah, you must pawn. teach me the ways of love, Pawn. Pawn, just put it back in your pants, Dor- says Dorothy of Oz. See, listen oh, to her heart. Here. Doesn't hear anything. Yeah, it's all chilly. I like heartless women. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. me too. So yeah. much so I married one. It backfired. You see, like they were preventing. Wait a minute, Carl. Yeah. I... <laughs> That's the second time. You, I, will, I will not stand for this, Carl. You're disparaging your wife. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, you, yeah. I'm sitting. You're the only one. So uh, Ice Queen has like a terrific dress, which we've been noticing okay, throughout. So now, it's like, yeah. Yeah, well, she is a princess. Oh, yes. Now we come to where the Scarecrow lives. Why? For what reason? I don't know. This but, is, yeah. The scarecrow's going to come alive. And he's just by the steps, huh? They, they happen to sit by steps to that are next to a fence. And that's where the guy's going to pop up. Right. That works out. He looks like Ronald McDonald, and King Cruel looks like Burger King. <laughs> and Dorothy looks like Wendy's. Oh, mind blown. Got it. And Pond okay, is Arby's. Did, you see how bad it is? Uh, in frame. What's in the center of the frame right now? Right. It's the, it's the fucking stairs and all the action is yeah. happening on the right side. Oh, no, finally. Now, you see how he fell? Yeah. And you see that, that erection the scarecrow has? In the real life. I mean... Yeah, that's a real bad trip. He's still tied up by the feet. Gotta hurt. Gotta hurt. Or he has a huge erection. Either one. Now, the eyes are very well done on this scarecrow because they're goddamn lifeless. I tell you, he's looking through little holes in the eyes, I suppose, because he really looks like... Is it in makeup, though? Like, it's just white makeup? No. Or he really has a burlap sap over his head, and he fell over head, head first? Well, I guess... The Scarecrow, scarecrow falls, falls in love in with glory. Love, love with... Right. It tries Gloria. to melt her heart. Why? It doesn't serve the plot. He doesn't have a brain, Carl. The Scarecrow? <laughs> yeah. If but I that's own. not part of this story, is seeking a brain. You see the eyes? Yeah, they pay that's weird shit. Maybe he doesn't have any eyelids. You know? Oh, did you know the, I have this trivia book, the original lyrics to the If I Only Had a Brain <laughs> song? It goes, uh, if I only had a brain. Wait a minute, I don't have a brain? I shouldn't be functioning. And then he dies. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Actually, the brain is all about mobility. All about navigating a physical world. Oh, so you can still be a, a husk. You can still be an empty vessel like that scarecrow. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. That makes sense. That's worth to live by. Listen, there's this plant. It has a brain. No kidding. It's on the bottom of the ocean. And then, okay, she's ripping the stuffing out of him, by yeah, the way. Yeah, right. Now, why does she want to kill the scarecrow? Why? Well, that's an odd thing. She- Mumbai hates the, the scarecrow. Why? Something's wrong. I don't know. See, that's the whole thing about this whole movie. It's just like people aimlessly walking around doing nothing. Silent movies were all shot in the same fucking park sometimes. Like Griffin Park or something. Like They're just like, well, here's an idea. You're walking down the park and this bad guy steals your girlfriend and ties her to a tree. Okay, we can shoot it right here in the park. You know, it's always a park. Or it's always right. like weird exteriors. And all this exciting stuff happens, but it's just your backyard. Now, 
They just met Scarecrow, right? right? And so he's like their best friend all of a sudden. So they re-stuff him. For what reason? What are they off to do? And look what Gloria's doing. Just Nothing. hanging out. Yeah, well, she's a cold, she's cold-hearted. Here she's comes a... Donkey. I think his name is Hank. And for some reason, again, they have a fight. Even though... You can't get enough of that. We're past that point in the plot. You can't get enough of the donkey old lady fights. Yeah, I gotta go back in it. When when he scares her and she falls over, he always laughs. In this <laughs> corner. Oh, that was a good one. It's good pantomime. Yeah, that's right. She goes. <laughs> do you, do you know panto pantomime, the British bullshit where they uh, they dress up as donkeys and they run around? It's usually for Christmas. I know Mister Mime. I mean, I wonder if that guy is schooled in that. Scarecrow's up and running. They're getting him yep. up. That's right. Yeah. Apparently, he doesn't need a brain. He needs straw. Straw and Red Bull. Oh, he is just rambling. He is in character. And Pawn is still trying. Yeah, one more time. Okay, now this is supposed to be a boy, even though you can see it's a girl. Uh, his name is Button Bright. Yeah, these are all characters. These are all characters from the show, from the books. Like he wrote fifteen books. Did you, did you yeah. take a L. Frank Baum? Like he didn't start writing these children's books till later in life, or as the story goes. But he was like a weird guy yeah. who did a lot of stuff that failed. I don't know. Like okay, yeah, he did a lot of stuff that failed, but. He wasn't like a slacker dude. Oh, he he had a little newspaper. It huh. tanked. He always wrote. He wrote, um, and and his and his stuff got published in uh, magazines and such. Huh. I, I don't know. I always thought the guy was a loser. Okay, now here's another a typical example of a completely stupid scene that's for no reason. Here we're by a, I don't know, we're by a stream. Why? And they're trying to feed him, but he doesn't eat. The stuffed Why? scarecrow is unable to eat food. Yeah. So he tries to, it's a stupid joke. He tries to put it in his eye. He tries <laughs> to put it in his ear. Oh, I'm just laughing, roaring, laughing. He wants well, to put it if you were a neck. kid, you'd be laughing. And if you're from oh, Kansas, you'd be like, yeah, you stupid. can't put it in your ear. This is educational. So, but like, where did Pond go? Why is Mumbai not pursuing them? Why did he just go upside down on a tree? Yeah, why did he just do that? Well, I can answer your questions. He's a fucking uh, blowhard. Because Uh the the director's like, let's shoot the scene and make sure the entire scene is the stream. And then Scarecrow on the side, can you just go hang off a tree? Oh, uh, some action's Uh happening right there. Yeah, this is poorly directed. It's crazily directed. I'm not used to seeing camera angles like this, where the action takes place way on the right. (laughs) Now, the guy who directed this, his name was Farrell McDonald, and he did a lot. Yeah. He, he was an actor, and he was a uh, director, and he did like, he died in, at 70-something years old, 1950, he died, uh, yeah, 1950-something he died. He did a lot of work. I heard he's uh, so prolific. Always proli- silent film. I heard he's so prolific, uh, on the time of his death, he was doing two Netflix shows, two shows for Netflix. That's how <laughs> prolific the guy was. Mm-hmm. Well, when talkies came, he was done. Yeah. I mean, he did 50-something films, and then they were talking. Now, why is Scarecrow doing this? He's having fun. Scarecrow is sitting on a stream, and he's playing with water. Well, because he's he's new to life, Carl. He's experiencing it. And if you were a kid, you would appreciate it. I see. I see. So he's new to life. Yeah. So he's just... You know, I guess he thinks life is for the stupid. Now, why is Gloria coming? I don't know. And there's Pond. There's Pond. What were they like, doing? What, what were they doing all that time? Goal. They must have been doing something. Oh, is that Mumbai with the hat or is that Pond's hat? The tin it's castle Pond. or the tin... So, again, right. like in 1910, the fucking... Everybody ha- is so in- entrenched in the story. I mean, the the tin man in, this, in the... 
39 movie, we meet him and he, he gets a heart. But in the stories, in the books, you know, he became king of his own domain. And well, this that's is, where he is right now. Yeah. So this is like six books into it or something. Yeah. This is called Winky County, and he is the castle of uh, the Tin Woodman. Huh. Uh, a guy named Pierre Couderit. Uh, he's rusted solid right now. Um, he lives in this tin castle, and he is the king here. Uh, there's a book called The Emerald City of Oz in 1910, and uh, it's all about him. Look how bad his costume is. It's clearly not tin. It's cloth. But, um, here, I got a quote from the Patchwork Girl of Oz. The Tin Woodman is one of the most important creatures of all Oz. The Emperor of the Winkies. He is personal friends of Ozma, who he owns a allegiance. Yeah, Ozma is another character. Also known mm -hmm. some, something of a dandy, he keeps his tin body brilliantly polished and his tin joints well oiled. He is very courteous in manner and is also so kind and gentle that everyone loves him dearly. Tin is plentiful in the Winky County, and the Winkies are said to be the most skillful tinsmith in the world. Oh, so they like to jerk off their king. Uh, so the Tin Woodman hired them to jerk off, to build his magnificent uh -huh. castle, which we see in frame, which is all of tin, from the ground to the tallest turret, and so brightly polished that it glimmers in the sun's rays more glorious than silver. Although I just think this is the old copy of the print of the movie. In the handsome tin parlor, all the floors are made of tin. Now look, do you see what happened? They chopped his head off? She, he chopped off Mumbai's head. And she's like, where's my head? Watch, you'll see. It does not slow her down. This is some real good camera tricks here. Yeah. She's now wearing she a... She finds her head. Yes. She's going to put now it watch on. watch the camera trick. Right. She's obviously just boof at her. Oh, that's pretty good. Yeah, that was. Carl, like, hmm. you found a copy of The Wizard of Oz, a 1925 silent film as well? Uh, I sent you the link. Was yeah. it 25? Um, yeah, well, it said 25. I understand, from what I understand, that this version that we're watching was reissued decades on with narration. With narration? No, I didn't learn that. I learned that it came out in 1914 and it didn't do well in the theater at all. So they renamed it The Scarecrow of Oz, released it in 1915. Huh. It still did better, but it never get, regained the money it took to make it. Okay, look, she just turned Pawn into a kangaroo. Oh, oh, oh okay? man, a lot of furries in this movie. Plot point. He is then, hopping mad, Carl. <laughs> In 1960, they found the first reel, I don't know who, and this guy who did the Art for Oz books um, was hired to make, make these things you're looking at right now. Um, he's from Chicago. Oh, here's um, the Carly Lion. Okay, this is weird. This footage is from a different movie, and they just threw it in here. Huh. Or it's the other way around. This footage appears in another film. Now, Who's this he? is a monkey, and you know the monkeys that the, in the, uh, right, the wing 1939 monkeys. one. Yeah, so it's a monkey making an appearance. He's not flying, though, for some reason. Now, what is he doing exactly? Is he fighting the lion? Is he playing I with them? I, I think they just have time to kill. They're, they're now, fucking fuzz called... furries. That's what the deal is. <laughs> it's a good costume. That lion costume. Yeah. And what we saw was called the Lonesome Zoop. That was what that monkey was called. It says, reused footage from the Magic Cloak of Oz. Then we're back to the castle. Well, because they okay, were looking so we for the lion, and they went up to that guy, and they said, who are you? And he said, I'm a, what? A moosey zoop? Zoop. And they said, you're yeah, not lying. <laughs> and they you're said, you're not, you're not lying. Oh, so here's the king. Look at him, man. So he also falls in love with her. Which is normal back then. And here's the kangaroo. Here's Pawn as really a kangaroo. Saying, excuse me. Excuse me. Okay. I love you, Mammy. So Dorothy's like, she's got a frozen heart. You cannot... She cannot love. They really like hanging outside the gates of castles in, in these Oz movies. 
the Tin Woodsman, indigent of the poor girl's flight, proposes to conquer King Cruel and make Gloria queen. Right. Now, that's a serious plot point that doesn't make any sense. He's like, I love this girl. Well, she has a frozen heart. Well, then I will overthrow the king and make her the queen. Now, let us all dance in a circle. Meanwhile, the scarecrow is the guy who, in the end, becomes king. So, so why? Why? It's so stupid. Oh, now... Oh, uh, the least are on a yeah. boat, or are they walking in the water? No, they're they're okay. in a raft. You see, the fuck what clearly happened here is there was other footage that got lost. Okay. How did they all of a sudden end up on a raft? Right. You know, escaping Mumbai, who's pursuing them. This is like really cool to watch. It's four people in costume on a fucking raft. In the now middle look of the how water. bad a director this guy is. Yeah. He has the boat go from left to right, and then he cuts. To the boat again going from left to right. I guess the camera never moves in this movie at all. Yeah. It's always stationary for these shots. Now, look what dumbass Scarecrow has done. By a mistake, which was so clearly obvious, he has marooned himself uh, with His the pole stuck, that he was using yeah. to push the raft. But he looks like a Scarecrow of the water, like scaring scare, water crows. Well, now we're going to see... It's funny you say that. Now we're going to see an underwater scene, which makes it has nothing to do with anything. First it's of all, they're not effects. in the ocean, they're in a lake. But meanwhile, he's going to encounter a mermaid. Well, this guy nearly drowned because of his shot. This is so crazy. They're, they're shooting an underwater scene. It looks like. Right. Well, of- they're behind a real live fish tank, and they've got puppets of sharks. That shark. Puppet sharks. Shark puppets. So now he's out, but he's not going to be out. He's going to go back down and go, whoa! Right. Meanwhile, the actual raft is, like, long gone. Yeah. Now he's back there. What's he saying? Now a mermaid. Oh, there's a mermaid with an umbrella. And an umbrella is to keep her dry. Ha, ha, ha. Wow. She's like, it's $10 to touch it. $5 to see it. But he can touch her for free. One time a mermaid let me see, but boy, did it smell like fish. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they like to be reminded of that, too, so it's a good thing you mentioned it. So now he's... He's still in the water. This movie's like 20 minutes of him in the water. He's climbing that pole. Right. Now he's going to lose his hat, and then it's going to reappear later... Okay, you see that crow? Uh huh. For some reason, this crow decides it will rescue the scarecrow. He's not scared of crows, I guess. I don't get it. How do they train this crow to act? <laughs> it's once again, it's uh, Frank. Uh, oh, it's, Frank, a, it's uh, a human Frank in a bird's costume. Yeah. Fuck it, eh, man. They must have great orgies at the end of the set. <laughs> Look, you see that? Yeah, it's Why? like a man in a bird suit carrying a man in a scarecrow suit across. <laughs> now, how did they get off the raft and onto the land? And why are they together? Like, why is the Tin Man tagging along? And where boom, was he before? He <laughs> this crow is fucking nuts. Is it a yeah. crow or a raven? I I forget who's tall, bigger. My kid would know this. Well, a raven is certainly larger than a crow, but a crow can be massive bird. Our neighborhood, we have pigeons, crows, ravens, and hawks. Uh huh. So I so can recognize. So he's saying them. thank you, even though it looked like a fight. Another dancing. Why are they dancing in t- together? Do you think a hundred years ago we would be in the movie theater complaining about this film? Like I don't get it. I, Why I is this guy? Know. Oh my God, he's walking towards the camera. Oh, phew. Well, it's a good question. Is this like somehow wrapped in the uh, mystique of vaudeville or something? Like we wouldn't need to. We just, it's enough that we're seeing weird things happen on the screen. I don't know. Well, I mean, he he was an industry. I mean, he had all these books and people knew him and he was internationally renowned during this time. So, right. it, It was selling of a brand. Although this film did not work out well. Uh, 
and uh, the the company was not long to live. There's Pawn as a bull. Once again, as a kangaroo. Oh, but that was a bull coming at him. So they put a lot of money into this thing, and it didn't work. Huh. So they weren't dead. In December of 1914, they released another one called The Last Egyptian. It was based upon a uh, adult novel that uh, Frank, L. Frank Baum wrote. He published it anonymously originally. I don't know why they picked it. Um, this Fred Woodward, who does all the animals here, he was in it as a real person. So this animal and just sat on the scarecrow. Only three of them, three of the real still survive. But it didn't do well. So, also, this woman, Violet McMillan, who's playing Dorothy, she did some children's stuff, like a couple short, I don't know. Basically, it died. Now, Frank Baum did not lose any money. He didn't invest any money. He took company stock uh, to, you know, for them to use his stories. Um, he didn't make any money off the stock, did he? Uh, no, no, because it died. Now, his eldest son who they don't say his name, but I think it was Joyce, even though that's a lady's name. I thought it was M. Um, Frank Baum. What? M. Frank Baum. L. L. No, his son. Oh, I think his son was named Lip. Oh, all right. Lip. Lip. Oh, I think he had another kid named Bug. All right, so as you were saying, I'm sorry. Well, basically the company went under. Uh, the son tried to save it, too. Uh, he used to be in charge of distributing uh, the film on the East Coast, and he tried to take over. Anyway, it, it all failed. It all went downhill, and nobody would touch uh, Frank Baum's film for years and years and years. And as you know, about 20 years later, in 1939, they were like, heck yeah, we'll take this film. And they, right. they, they made... Uh, um, Wizard of Oz. You know, the, Right, and we would not know this guy. We wouldn't be watching this thing were it not for that book. Oh, abs absolutely. I mean, I, the children's books hold sway. I mean, they would have been popular with it. They would have been a movie because of the book. The yeah. book still has a cash in, but that movie itself, it's one of my favorite movies because it redefined what a Hollywood film is. They changed the dynamic of the book. The book is just a rambling mess of adventures. The uh -huh. uh, the evil witch doesn't uh, claim vengeance because he killed. A, that's all from the movie. That whole premise of the you killed my yes. sister and now I'm going to go after you, and how she has to face her fear and this and stuff. That's all a mention of the movie. That's that's the hero's journey, and that's something that every fucking film has been doing for the last hundred years. And I see what you're saying. And that's because of the way they tinkered with the story of the book. Uh, and they turned it into a Hollywood movie. And by definition, created a, a template for Hollywood movies to come. Every movie is basically Wizard of Oz, right? Uh, I don't know. I don't know if I could do it. You're a loser. You're nothing but a loser. Oh, no, I'm not. Oh, I'm tired. I'm in the land of the poppies. Oh, I got saved. Oh, what? It was with me all along? Pow, pow, punch. You know, at the end. Yeah. Oh, they're still in their raft. Yeah, now they're encountering something called the wall of water. You see how they're laying down? Yeah. We're supposed to think that that's like a big wave. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they created the wall of water by turning the camera sideways. Yeah, that's yeah. right. And also, once again, I hate this director. Like, he has them come in from left to right, and then you cut to them again coming from left to right. He was a big Sonic the Hedgehog fan. That's why. It was a big influence on his work. We had to go from left to right on a platform. Now, we're going to meet from Wizard of Oz soon. And it's also not like the movie in which he's like uh, some guy who's in charge of all of the land of right. Oz or something. He is just... Oh, you see the birds on the island there? Uh-huh. It's just neat. Like, you don't know they're birds. That for, I mean, I didn't know they were birds until that happened. Oh, they they think scared away all the birds. Well, the the birds were uh, not in union today to leave the shot. <laughs> they refused to sign a disclaimer form. They didn't have a SAG card. <laughs> Listen, that's very serious SAG cards and stuff. You there's you cannot you have to be in with screen actors. Look, you oh by the way, watch these idiots. Watch this. Oh, now that hurt him. 
That, that fucking hurts. hurts. We just yeah. watched the Tin Man in full costume walk down a circular pole from a raft. Here, no, the Scarecrow's going to try. Well, so he purposely fell. He did. Like, the whole thing of this shtick was we're going to do a crash fall. Yeah. Um, you know, you can't work on the set of RuPaul uh, if, unless you have a fag card. But you got to work. I'm sorry. Yeah, well, some of those shows actually... Uh, we're anti-union. Like, I know T- uh, Tyler Perry has his production house in, uh, I think Georgia is non-union or something like that. But, the, yeah, I'm, well, I'm glad they put down. Now, here's a joke. It's a sawhorse. Oh, sawhorse is an actual character from these Oz books. Mm-hmm. It's a long story. Like, Mumbai had a potion that turned people into real things. And uh-huh. one of the characters, it might have been Dorothy. I mean, a lot of these books don't fucking even have Dorothy in them at times. Uh, now look how they say hello to Sawhorse. Everyone knows him. Like here's Wizard of Oz. He yeah. kn- everybody knows who he yeah. is. Scarecrow just came to life. Dorothy just showed up from no, Kansas. This, but, but, but meanwhile, everybody knows the Wizard of Oz. Hi. This, Handshakes and hugs all around. This original story takes place in like the middle of these story, a series of books. So by this point, everybody does know everybody and everybody knows like weird shit like talking sawhorse, you know? Uh-huh. Like these are all normal. This is completely normal. And the, it's just because we're so used to the fucking movie that I we see. can't think that anything happened afterwards or that they would just all be leveled off as equals like this at one point. Do you know what now, I mean? Like, he's putting everybody into there. Yeah. Because somehow the witch is going to come and get tricked. Now, this is a special effect because all, all these there. characters are walking into one small bo- into one box. Now, here comes the witch. Right. And she saw that, apparently. And somehow the wizard knew that. She's being a jerk to the sawhorse, of course. Oh, yeah. She doesn't like sawhorse. Now, look what the wizard does. He says, come on, everybody. Sneak out while the dummy witch is going up through the top. So we have one long shot of like seven people coming out of that small box. Yeah. Yeah. It must really hurt to be on the set of. Not seven people. It's four, so it's quadruplet. Oh. Come out of that box. Now look, take the ladder away. Now she's stuck. You're boxed in. (laughs) Ha ha ha. Oh no, she's on top of the box. Yes, that's right. She's not in the box. Now, how is it that she doesn't see that they're right there? Right. Oh, you know why? Because Sawhorse distracts her with his farting. You can see the color correction is pretty good here. I mean, it is in color, of course. It's black and white. But uh, it's not so bad. The film does need restoration for all of that. Uh, but also, the oh. framing, you see, there were areas on this film that were used for soundtrack that in today's films, even, you know, Wizard of Oz and 39, uh, were part of the picture area. Right. Well, that's Now, another... look, Scarecrow feels the face of a lion, right. and he's like, oh, so you think it's going to be a scared scene, but instead he likes it. I don't get it. They high-five each other. Hello there, lion. He thought he was a crow. Hello, Lion. Now, what is it they're talking about? He's saying, I'm a talking scarecrow, and here's a talking tin man, and he runs a car, and who the fuck are you? Uh, This guy, uh, Dixon Martin, he was the Chicago-based artist who designed all these title cards and interstitials because he was picked because he was an illustrator of a a number of the uh, Oz novels. So it's very much in the Baum tradition, they claim. But there's so few titles in this film, like this. What are they even talking about? You don't <laughs> see a title card. Right, yeah. A title card would be great right about now. By the way, those title cards are really exquisite. I mean, they have on the uh, outside O and then a Z inside the O. Like the, yeah. the headband that Dorothy wore at the beginning of the film. That's like right. their logo. Like they they were completely branded back in 1914. This is a huge success. Now here is the sawhorse pulling along the trapped Mumbai. She can't get down because there's no ladder. There's no way she could Never jump off she this has thing. Magic. 
So you would have to jump off that, that truck. Oh, and the box has Wizard of Oz on it. Yeah. So he goes, Mumbai, here, here, I will save you. Come down. Here's a ladder. By the way, the credits were wrong, too. It said that uh, L. Frank Baum was the director of the film. Yeah, I it noticed that. It misspelled that, that uh, May Wells' name. It left out the credit for Googly Goo entirely. It says all animals are done by Fred Woodward, but yet there's like two or three animals in the scene at a time sometimes. God, Carl, when, I saw, when I saw that the writer of the, the novel of Wizard of Oz directed a Wizard of Oz movie, I was like, oh, shit, I never knew that. Right. Yeah, but he wrote it, which is still impressive, but yeah, he didn't direct it. That would be just too much. So look, he says, look, here is a Metal tin. Can. He's going to, it's a, of sandwiches, right? He makes the tin. She squeezes into the tin. See, his magic oh. is more powerful than the witch. Preserved sandwiches. And it spells sandwiches with right. a T. That's some clever uh, English puns. Well, no, but he's uh, he, he's showing you. It says preserved sandwiches, yeah. but he goes poof. I have a I have a paintbrush. Poof, and it's going to be preserved. Which <laughs> wait a minute, <laughs> that doesn't make any sense. I thought it here he. First off, there's no such thing as a preserved sandwich. Uh, there is a, a hamburger in a can, and I've seen the photo on the internet. So there's that. Second of all, he I guess in their day. Well, back in their day, everything is preserved in a metal in a tin can. I get that, but they don't fucking back in the day have sandwiches in tin cans, and they don't spell it with a T. So he made a Bugs Bunny joke putting the witch in there, and I thought uh-huh. he already had a pun, but he had by spelling sandwich with a T, making a sandwich. <laughs> because she's a witch, and that's it. But no, he had to go gild the lily, and he had to paint off the word sand. And that doesn't, the joke's muddled. I mean, what was the joke? The joke was there's a pun on sandwich because he's he's in a can as a preserved sandwich. Right, but it doesn't go with the real world. But he has to still like play with the joke and paint over the word sand. Anyway, sorry. So King Cruel finds Gloria, who's been missing, if you notice, and he brings her back to the castle. Gloria. Gloria. Oh, here's Pawn. Pawn. I'm a kangaroo. Let's have bestiality sex. Come on, I know you're cold hearted, but surely you like to have sex with a kangaroo. Uh. <laughs> oh, she doesn't oh, love you. Look at, he's hopping, man. <laughs> what is he even doing? Hey, Googly Goo's back. Yay, hey, Googly Smollett, Goo. by the way. Oh. You see that kick? That's what happens when you court a woman next to a kangaroo. Kangaroo kicks you. You know, uh, Pond's been keeping his keys and his iPhone in his pocket. It's more of in like a pouch. purse than a, than a kangaroo pouch. pocket. Yeah, he should just get a purse, am I right? It's a European men's pouch. The original fanny pack. <laughs> the fanny pack was never on your fanny. Well, fanny it is a, a curse pack. word, is a dirty word for uh, vagina, isn't it? In England. What? Say it again. Fanny means vagina in England. It, oh, yes, it does in England. Here it means butt, right? Right, yeah. Here it means, in the United States it means butt, but in the United Kingdom it means fan, uh, vagina. Oh, <laughs> fanny pack. So it is now your, look, yeah. look at that set, right? That's a good Their set. Their mother, uh, the guy who did the stuff, them, his, his mother was very proud. It looks great, yeah. boy. We're looking at a scenery of a, of a castle with the turrets, and it looks great. Right. A castle wall. Now, there's going to be a bunch of arrows slung at the scarecrow, but he's made a straw, so it's okay. Yeah, but the actor's not made a straw. The actor from 1914 getting arrows through it. Gotcha. And also, we're going to find out that lions can't climb ladders, apparently. Now, look, Gloria, even yeah. though she's cold-hearted and she's, like, in a daze, suddenly she wakes up and says, here's a ladder, here's a rope ladder. 
So Gloria is awake now. Oh, look. One person realized there's a lady next to them throwing a ladder over. So there goes uh, see all the arrows, arrows in the ha, ha, funny joke. And he's attacking all of the guards. And they're all dying of hay yes. fever. Hay fever. We're not crows. We're human beings. <laughs> and the scarecrow just easily takes care of King Cruel. There's uh, Smollett. Uh, I mean, uh, Googly Goo. And Googly I'm uh, scared of the... And the Scarecrow and the Tin Man are just like, whatever, let's do our stick. You know, another thing about the, the Wizard of Oz 39 movie, it was a musical that never really outstayed its welcome as a musical. You know what I mean? Like, it made sense that she would sing about Over the Rainbow, and it made sense they would sing these songs. And, like, right. it actually kind of blended in really well. Oh, and you're saying since it wasn't meant to be a musical, it could have been. No, it's that as a musical, it, it worked. It was ingratiated. It worked really well. Nothing. It mm-hmm. never really stopped the show when they sang a number. You know what I mean? It all pushed forward the story. Now you can see that he's been crowned the king. Yes, King Scarecrow. And he's got his. Yeah. I got two underage women on each arm. Right. Well, one of them's a boy. Now, here's our lion. He's going to go up and have the fun. But, oh, no. Oh, try again. Try again. Well, lions, no, yeah. No, because he's don't... got paws, I guess. Well, they're used to walking all four <laughs> paws on the ground, so that clearly they can't go up a ladder. How can you do that? I, I suppose. Take a lift. Call so Uber. he quits. Fuck this shit. I'm going back to the jungle. Right. His Majesty the the Scarecrow now. And all the people in the kingdom are like, oh, you just uh, knocked over our king and you're the king now? Okay. <laughs> Whatever. Our king was this real person and you're, you know, who gives a shit? <laughs> <laughs> you were made real by the spirit of the corn. Well, we only got a couple more minutes of this. Is something better happen? Yeah, that's, we're used to a longer film. Oh boy, there's that kangaroo, Carl. Need I not even tell you? <laughs> yeah. He is hopping mad. Kangaroo beer is made from the finest hops. It is from the finest hops. Really high ones. Oh, here comes stupid scarecrow. This is your king. Flailing. Your king. He can't even walk. That's your king. And did you read his tweet this morning? What an idiot. <laughs> Oh. oh, he can't even sit down. He's full of stick. He's full of stick. No, hell, King Scarecrow. I'll now, take, yeah. here comes the Wizard of Oz, and everyone knows him and parts way for him because Gloria still has a frozen heart. Oh, right. So look what he's got. A heart? And freeze the heart. It's preserved, a preserved witch. Which with that um, Dorothy in Wonderland, uh, Alice in Wonderland hat. Yo, the Mad Hatter hat? Yeah, Mad Hatter. Okay, so she's going to come out, and she's gonna. he's going to be like, do you promise to be good? Will you melt the heart of Princess Gloria? See, look, and yeah. He's like, yeah, sure, of course I will. Sure, as long as the camera doesn't get my whole face in the screen, I'm fine. <laughs> See, like, could this be the uh, strip of sound to the right? I, I don't know. I don't know. But he's got everyone in the shot right now. And what was the sound? We don't know. It's like some piano or something. Right. Oof. And now she's like, oh, thank you, thank you. I'm pretending to be nice because you know she's not nice. She's not nice. I've been in a can. Hello, my name is Old Mumbai, and I've been in the can, preserved. And here are my friends, my fellow witches. Right, she makes her witches show up. The director's like, okay, cut, you go, stop talking, we're done. But I'm in character, you see, I'm telling Gloria that I'm going to make her heart. Yeah, whatever, look, we shot it. Oh, it hurts, it's good, touch, touch her breast. There's frozen a frozen heart. heart, pops up. 
Makes it normal. Makes it heady, heady. Goes back Goes in. Goes back in. Touches the breast for good measure. Uh, and she goes, oh, oh, now I'm I, Gloria. And, oh, so much love. Oh, I feel love. I could love a kangaroo. No, I can't fuck a kangaroo. Oof, but the I witches sh- are gone. I'll, ha- I'll have to sleep with the wizard. Now, for some reason, the witch is not forced to undo what she did to Pawn. For some reason, the wizard can just do it. Yeah. Oh, well, he... The logic doesn't make sense. Because he's been a kangaroo, and the wizard's been hanging out with him for the last 10 minutes. Mm Mm-hmm. He could have just... Now, there's Googly Goo. And look, say, please... He goes, take him away, and they take him to get his... Get killed. Now, what did he do? (laughs) Freddie, he knew a king. He said, look, I'll marry her. Here's some jewelry. She, she, that's what he needs to get killed for? I don't even know who this I made a proposal. Is. Now they're yeah. all hail Scarecrow. For the some reason. end. This, you gotta end on that. Oh, it is over. And then we go back to Dorothy with her uh, weird tiara thing. Creepy smile. I love it. That's a great way to start a movie is a giant fucking head with your logo <laughs> on it. Well, well, we have more time. Yeah, we do. So a we lot have, of it. We have a, a short uh, that we thought might be fun to watch, I guess. Um, Carl, I no, can't I figure... Didn't yeah. Put it, yeah, what was the short? Because... Oh, it was shit. I didn't put it in the playlist. Did I, um, did I mail it to you? Let me check my phone. <laughs> I don't think so, unless it was... Was it the one that they got... He sued? Yeah, I think I got mixed up. So there was... Uh, if you get the... Um, Wizard of Oz uh, DVD, which I do have. Um, uh, you do have a. Uh, it comes with these bonuses. One is a cartoon that got sued. It was like a little cartoon about the Wizard of Oz. Uh-huh. And, uh, and I guess the family sued over that, or was it an old timey one? Uh, yeah, it was an old timey uh, uh, thing. But there's a 10 minute Wizard of Oz short that I, I'd like us to do, and I, I just forgot the. All right, actual... if we're gonna leave this film entirely, let me just tell you a few interesting. Yeah, please do, things. and I'll, I'll find the other movie while we speak. Wait, wait. Talk. Okay, so we saw Button Bright, the kid Button Bright, who was a boy. Her name is Mildred Harris, and what's interesting about her is she was also the first wife of Charlie Chaplin. Boom. boom. So wait, how okay. old was she? Um, I don't know. She had to be in her 20s. Um, okay, Violet McMillan was Dorothy. She was 29 in this film. But it's her first non britches film role. Um, she always played little boys. She played a little boy in The Patchwork Girl of Oz in 1914 and The Magic Cloak, also in 1914. And she was also... Um, Later in that uh, those children's shorts for this company, as a Let's boy, see. as a no, uh, she was a boy in the Patchwork Girl of Oz and the Magic Cloak. She played boys, and this is the first time she played uh, Dorothy, um, a girl. Now, the Wizard of Oz name was J. Charles Hayden, and he was um, a writer and an actor. And in 1920, he made this very strange version of Mr. Jekyll and of Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde and then he went away forever so uh, Um, I found the film okay the very last thing is yes you had said you had said a thing about Oz Uh, apparently there's a tagline for Oz called a land where nothing is odd because everything is odd and where gruesome fate lurks around every corner because his novels like others at the time Children were allowed to be exposed to a little bit of horror. You know, we wouldn't have that today. Okay, right. go, go ahead with your uh, short. I'll look it up here. Okay, so this is uh, basically the first Wizard of Oz movie from 1910. And uh, it's called The Wonderful Wizard of Oz. And I went ahead and typed in The Wonderful Wizard of Oz into the YouTube search engine with 1910 following it. And I see uh, right out the top, I see three versions of it. Uh, it's a 13-minute film, so if you got 13 more minutes with Carl and me, and yeah. uh, when do we do uh, video seller? Video seller, 235,000 views put up there six years ago. Let's get it 
in the buffer. All right, so go ahead and click it and then hit pause while it buffers. Uh, I got an at-home Starbucks.com commercial coming my way. Uh, it's buffering like forever. Okay, uh, I'm going to fucking get this commercial out of the way. Oh, it's a K-cup. Gross. Fuck you. No, K-cup is the superior cup of coffee. Oh, you are a big K-cupper. I am a K-cup person. It's All right, so I got to pause. So what? I yeah. never go backwards. Huh. Do you like the Nespresso's? No. All right. All right. I like the concept of K-cup because it's a pod. It's single. You don't like pouring coffee down the fresh. sink? Don't you remember? Yeah. The coffee would go to waste. It would start that burnt smell in the carafe. It would be, smell like work, like you were at work. Right. I'm glad those days are over. Well, I like brewing a pot of coffee and then realizing I drank four cups of coffee with, and then finally feeling normal and then getting coffee sick. And because I drank four <laughs> cups in a row. All right, so we're going to go ahead. I have it paused. We're going to watch the, uh, and then we'll get out of here. The wonderful, oh, and before we get out of here, I'll announce next week's movie. So hang on. Uh, yeah. So let's go ahead. Uh, I'll do the countdown this time. We're going to watch The Wonderful Wizard of Oz from 1910. And which one did you pick? This is the video seller's version. It has okay. TVC icon as well as the video seller icon on it. Uh, so uh, a lot of crap on the screen. It's ironic they're not selling it. Yeah, well, it's public domain at this point, I'm sure. All right. Well, one, two, three, go. I mean, because it was video stuff. Okay, so once again, we have... Uh, Selig Uh Oh, well, there's the donkey. There's donkey again. And there's the townsman. So this the must townsman. be Kansas. That's got to be Kansas. With the farmers. Oh, yeah? With the out-of-control donkeys? That's what Kansas is known for. All right, meets the wonderful scarecrow. So this must be Ozzo. Okay, that's got to be uh, Dorothy. The, Dorothy, the donkey. And, and, of course, cow face. Guy in a cow outfit. Yeah, and you see the painting behind them. It's just landscape. So according to the video seller, The Wonderful Wizard of Oz is the earliest surviving film version of L. Frank Baum's 1900 novel made by the Selick Polyscope Company without Baum's direct input. It was created to fulfill a congressional obligation associated with Baum's personal bankruptcy caused by the uh -huh. Fairy Lounge and radio plays, from which it was once thought to, is derived. It's partially based from the 1902 stage musical, although much of the film deals with the evil Wicked Witch of the West, who does not appear in the musical. Got it. Is that weird? Yeah, what's weird is Frank Baum was bankrupt Yeah. in 1910. 1910, that boy, that sure didn't stop him, right? No, it didn't stop okay, him. Okay, so here comes, I guess, the twister. Oh, so they were all in Kansas, according to this version, and then the cyclone came. Cyclone, the cyclone. Wow, look at that special effect. It's a blanket. I think it's a piece of bacon as this They're guy. moving the bacon across the sky. <laughs> It was a huge piece of bacon, which they had back then. Look at, wow, what an effect. Yeah, they're spinning their, bale of hay is spinning it around. Yeah, and they're making everything, boy, it's almost like a stage. The only thing not Blown moving is the, the camera. Land of Oz. Blown into the land of Oz. Right, it's, uh, it's a prison. Wow, they just, they all land on the same pile of hay. Yeah, it was a pretty precise twister, right? Yeah. Where's Donkey? Where's Donkey? Oh, no. We have a talking scarecrow, an anthropomorphic cow, but where's Donkey? Oh, there he is. <laughs> there he is. <laughs> All right, wait for me. There you go. Moma, the witch, asserts her power. Wasn't it with an eye? Yeah, it was with an eye. But again, like she's more important than the fucking any of the characters in the 1939 movie. Look at how they march. Uh, they want. They got different color leggings. Weird. Yeah, it is. Is that corn? They spent a lot of time and money on this. I yeah. guess this was from the play. Just to get sued. Look at this one-legged girl. 
I think they get there's he's got the same hat. Oh. Wizard of Oz. Here we go. I write in illegible handwriting that the audience cannot read as we show the letter on the screen. Signed the Wizard of Oz King. Omaha. As a wizard I am a humbug and tired of this king business. Wishing to keep this secret and cuts away. Yes, I want to announce that I want to keep this secret. Oh no, the evil witch descended from a string. How in the world was he bankrupt with all the notoriety of these books? Oh, people. So much so that people are making movies without his permission. Ask Johnny Depp. I don't know how it works. He just probably uh, spent more, like had a lot of maybe debt. Did Johnny from... Depp go bankrupt? Yeah, according, yeah, something like he spends $65 million a month. Oh my God, and, what and an the, idiot. That lifestyle and I is like bankrupt. that guy. That's an actor. Glinda the Good changes Toto into a real pros- a protector. Oh, there's Toto. Okay, so the dog becomes... What the fuck's going on? Is, isn't Glinda one of the... Oh, there uh, it is, the Night Switch. She's just, this is the weirdest stage production. There, People are popping up from strings. Oh, I just remembered Wicked. We didn't. I didn't even think about that. The, oh, yeah. The play? Right, Wicked. And that, that dives into the whole, all the books, because there's all the witches in it. Yeah. Look, the trees are, got face, has faces. Well, yeah, that's from the book, too, Carl. Uh-huh. I don't know. Do I take the time to read these books just for history's sake? Well, your kids are too old for them. You, you read them to your kids. I know. I think my mom read them to me. And we have, uh, I have a couple of the old copies that I had, and my kid is not interested. All right, so there's another letter from the fucking wizard. It's the same. Oh. I still don't know it. (laughs) Oh, he posted it on a sign. The lion walks on two legs. Well, yeah, while the animals walk on four. To walk on four legs breaks the law. The rusty tin woodman, after being oiled, proves grateful. Oh, so this is more like the the movie, the first book. I don't know. I mean, she's not on a journey to see the wizard for some reason. She got blown into Kansas. And then what happened? We saw the royal court and the, um, and the Wizard of Oz made some declaration thing. And then they found that. Okay, he's grateful now that he's been released. He's got poking, pokey. What's the long nosed boy? Right. Po- the puppet Pokio. What's his what name? I, Pinocchio. What I don't get is that why would she want to go to a magical land of Oz when she already has a walking, talking scarecrow in Kansas to begin with? And they're all dancing to something. Oh, the trumpet's playing his. his uh, Tim is playing his trumpet. And they're all boy, dancing. Boy, they to are it. really well rehearsed. Yeah. I, I hope Frank said, listen, I'm suing you guys, but that was great. <laughs> I loved it. Listen, Frank, we'll do a musical, the all dance, and it'll be a silent movie. That uh, sounds great. I'm going to spend all my, put my entire fortune into it. Is there sound here? I have sound playing off my monitor. There is a, but it's a silent movie. So the, uh, whoever was at the piano had to play something. Okay, so it's a public it's a domain. Full, it's a full cracker. orchestra. Our friends encounter Mumba the witch. Not Mumbi. Oh, I don't trust that house. Wasn't there a country Mumbai? Yeah, I think so. That's a yeah, it's not spelled the same. Hell. It's not. It's not named after the witch from the Oz books. Uh huh. What is flying up there? A bat thing? Are they playing the fucking Nutcracker? It's like public domain fever. Public Domain Music, scored yeah. by Public Domain... A movie scored by Public Domain Music. Oh, what the fuck is that? There's, like, cats, or what the fuck is that? Some musical cats. Memories. <laughs> They're playing the fucking Nutcracker? Well, I mean, if they were, like, 
stealing his book. It, it, they're stabbing. Dorothy the water them. is water is fatal to a witch. So she splashed the witch, and now the witch doesn't melt; it just disappears. And everyone's like, "Who put That's a fucking?" That's why my wife never showers. Ah, uh, because he's a witch. So oh, Carl. <laughs> They're like, why did who who put a, who brought a pail of uh, water into the witch's house? Yeah, don't she? She never cleans up. I wonder why. Emerald City to claim the crown. She's gonna be queen. This looks like the Thirty Nine movie. I mean, I'm sure they got inspired by this. Door well, it does have scenes, and it does feel more like. Yeah. Well, I guess it makes sense. It was the book, right? Well, the the book, yeah. Well, it's different from the thirty nine movie because they didn't kill a witch in the beginning, and and then there's a witch saying By surrender mistake, Dorothy. Yeah. That's all from the. That's all the the script writers. <sighs> all these fucking gate scenes. Yeah, we work here. The wizard free the scarecrow made. The wizard free the scarecrow made king. Okay, so in this one, the scarecrow is also becomes the king. His Majesty the scarecrow. Wow, they need to shave. But they gotta sell cough drops first. We found your illegible proclamation. <laughs> okay, so the. The Wizard of Oz is king in this, and he's going to make the Scarecrow king for some reason. Yeah, like in the other time. I want to sing and dance. He goes, no, don't make me the queen. Make him the king. Yay! Yay. Scarecrow's the king. Because kings have no brain. Well, they're uh, they're very highly flammable. Kings are highly flammable. Uh, the scarecrows. <laughs> I don't know if you know that about anger. kings. There's a lot of the similarities. Poof, he's gone. Whoa, what a great... Oh, there the he is. Like, huh? I was sleeping with a chorus girl this whole time. <laughs> Boy, Dorothy's Little Red Riding Hood, isn't she? They're Look all going those. out in a procession. Oh. Nice tumble. They had all these extras. Uh, the wizard prepared to flitch? I couldn't read that. For flight? For flight. Oh, right, because he's got his hot air balloon. Union rules. No work after 12. A, Look, they made a union was- joke. Union rules, no work after 12. Yeah. And the clock so says 12. So what was the odds with a, with a balloon? There was something like that. He went on a hot air balloon. And uh, and there was that Franco person. Right. So that's, so that's the prequel I was mentioning. James uh, James Franco. Franco. You know, it's interesting. This week I saw a James Franco movie called Interior Leather Bar which he shot uh-huh. at the same time he was shooting, uh, he co-directed this film. It's about an hour long. And it's him recreating the leather bar scene in the movie Cruising. Because apparently they cut some scenes and he wanted to reenact it. So, uh-huh. It's, 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 He's so eccentric. Yeah, and they're saying, why do you want to shoot guys sucking each other off when you're starring in Oz, a Disney film? He's like, whatever, because yeah. I can. So he's really full of ego, that individual. Yeah. And, uh, okay, okay. But Duff, I mean, you're he, a star. Yeah. But, um, he's, uh, he plays Tommy Wiseau, the director of The Room, which is one of the worst movies ever made that came out 10 years ago. And, uh, one of the actors wrote a book called The Disaster Artist, his memoirs. And James uh-huh. Franco directed and stars as the bad director. So that, that's coming out. <laughs> How honest of him. <laughs> I might be able to see a screening of it. I'm looking forward. All right, so what are we looking at? We're watching men wearing diapers carrying uh, with horses. camel, with camels, and what? And uh, the characters sure love to dance. 
I mean, this film should have ended the end? when the yeah, yeah when when he became king. Wow. So uh, I guess the Wizard of Oz was off in his balloon. Oh, I'll say. And then we had a second. To, yeah, you're not selling anything. The video seller. No. I think they're just collecting stuff. The joke is S E L L. Oh, I see. I got you. Copyright 2010. That's 100 years. You said, right? You said 2010, Carl? It said video seller 2010. Copyright huh. 2010. Well, I don't know. That. I think it's ironic. 100 years later. Yeah, they, they took a public domain and, and uh, put the nut I mean, do over. you think in, uh, you know... 2117 people are going to be watching our YouTube podcast. I would love it. Welcome. Hello. How, where did we go wrong? <laughs> <laughs> well, I heard a story that the director Robert uh, Rodriguez made a film stars John Malkovitz and he will, will not show it until 100 years after the uh, release. So, Oh, wait. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah. There was a movie made and it won't be released for 100 years. Yeah. It's in a vault right now. So how do they make money off of it? They don't. No, this is a vanity project beyond belief. He's it's a t- it's a time capsule uh, in the way of a movie. So that's an interesting concept. Yeah. But there's no payoff today. Well, you know, uh, Mark Twain wrote his biography and said. I don't want you to publish this until 100 years afterwards, and it was published recently, like, you know, 10 years ago. Did they respect that? Yeah, they did. Cool. It was it was released in the, I don't know, this is a recent story. It was released in the last 20 years. Now, even though Mark Twain has had life, you know, he's had legs, everyone knows his name, but 100 years later, people weren't running out to buy. I mean, I didn't know that until you talked about it. Well, I mean, you know what I mean? Like, I think it might have been a bestseller if he. I don't want this release for ten years. Well, you know, the Robert Rodriguez. Well, because back then the medium was books, right? I mean, that was a predominant yeah. medium, and movies is a predominant medium. So who knows in a hundred years if people even want to sit through and watch a fucking movie? Right. You know, prob- they might have three D theater in your. Yeah. You know, everyone might have a room in their house that is their three D theater. Who knows? Who, who knows? knows? Hey, it could be something. Um, yeah. I'm reading a book right now um, called Time Quake. It's the last novel that uh, Vonnegut did before dying. And it talks about this period of time before television in which everyone would read magazines and everyone would know the, sto- the, the chronicled stories. Like, like, um, like Great Expectations wasn't written as a novel. It was in a periodical. A serial you form. Know, right, serial. That's the word I'm looking for. And Vonnegut was talking about how terrible it was that TV came along and destroyed this little little subculture that had lasted a hundred and something years. Anyway, he bemoans it. I didn't mind it going. I remember that book. That's pretty cool. Do you want to – should we check out uh, – let's watch one more movie real quick. Okay. Well, What, let's, do, you, what do you want to do? Uh – God, let's do uh, jokes my folks never told me. Can we just watch like two minutes of it? No. You still with me, man? I, the joke, yeah, I'm, I'm looking it up. Oh, jokes. Gotcha. The movie's called Jokes My Folks Never Told Me. Are we listening to audio? Because that's part of this. Yeah, let's just listen to like two minutes in a movie. How about that? Because there's no way we could riff this movie. I don't. I don't. I'll listen to the audio through your. Okay, so let me go ahead and pump this up. Uh, jokes my folks never told me from 1978. Elvis McClure is uh, hosting it. It's a new world release. It's basically bar jokes reenacted for 90 minutes. So you got the old timey bar joke movie. So the madam says, "What do you expect for five bucks?" Nineteen seventy-eight. <laughs> oh, is that a good one? Oh, wait, wait. Here's one you'll love. See, so you hear the guy telling jokes. <laughs> There's this little boy and a little girl. 
and they're walking home from school. And the little boy says, I got a new three-speed bike for my birthday. The little girl says, that's nothing. I got a new 10-speed bike for my birthday. Well, they walk a little way, and the little boy is getting upset. And he says, I've got over $10 in my piggy bank. The little girl says, that's no big deal. I've got my own bank account with over $100 in it. Well, they keep walking along. The little boy is really getting pissed now. He says, uh, last night, last night, my grandparents gave me my own dog. The little girl says, so what? Last week, my grandparents gave me my own horse. Well, out of exasperation, the little boy, he stops. He pulls down his pants and he says, well, I got one of these and you don't. Well, the little girl, she pulls up her dress and she says, well, I have one of these. And with one of these, I'll be able to get all <laughs> of those I want. I know that joke. You did? Oh, you should have stopped us. <laughs> no, I didn't know it until I heard the punch. Well, that was animated, so the people are going to reenact bar jokes like that. So I'm going to just click on... And what do you want me to do? The preacher. He's pointing <laughs> to his cock and he says, I want you to make me um, go up. I may be able to heal the sick, but I cannot raise the dead. <laughs> so that's the entire movie. So, audience, enjoy it. There's no way Carl and I could riff this movie. Here's a drunk at the bar. Any beer? <laughs> With lead in your pencil. It's Where's your man? Any good? Kentucky anyway? Fried movie. Yeah, I guess so. <laughs> yeah, it's like Kentucky Fried movie, but instead of parroting things, there's like just two bar jokes. Okay, so here's a piano player wearing a bordello. It's the last one. The guy's bringing in a younger man into a bordello. How do you do? And the piano plays. Uh, I'd like to meet my boy Desmond here. I'd like to explain a few. We're gonna close out on this joke, Carl. His okay. mother passed away when he was just a little bloke, and I. I had to raise them myself, out on the sheep station it was. But there were no women around, if you know what I mean. <laughs> uh, you think you can fix him up with a young lady who can teach him what he needs to know? Huh? Just a minute. Uh, ah. Here comes the prostitute. Desmond, this is Victoria. You run along with her and she'll show you the best time of your life. All right, Pa, thanks for the memories. <laughs> While we're waiting, do I have anything that might interest you? <laughs> <laughs> All right, so the mistress and the father go off, and we go back to the uh, young son and his prostitute. Now, in her why room. don't you get undressed, and I'll be back in just a minute. The great thing about these bar jokes is you can spend like five minutes to tell it. Right, so the dumbest pay, the dumbest punchline sometimes. I'm dying to hear this punchline. All right, this buff guy taking off his shirt. She's still wearing that pop-up bra that shows her nipple. He's completely what naked. What are you doing? He's moved all the furniture. Why have you moved all the furniture around? He's naked. Well, Mom, screwing a woman is anything like screwing a kangaroo. We'll be needing all the room we can get. He's circling her around. That's the joke. <laughs> oh, my God. So I hope audience enjoy that movie. There's no way yeah. to riff it, but it exists. And I, I, you need to know about it. Oh, this has been Let's Watch a Full-Length Movie on YouTube uh, with Mike Spiegelman and Carl. Carl, where can people find you? Well, but you were going to talk about... Uh, oh, yes, well, of I course. So next week, um, <clears throat> do you want to do the documentary? Oh, no, let's do the other movie. Mike, you are the boss All of right. what movie we do. Okay, so the point of this show is that I read a lot about bad movies uh, throughout the decades, uh, and I had never had the opportunity to see them. And I would just spend hours and hours reading about them instead of just watching the 97 minutes running time of the actual film. But thanks to YouTube, these films are available. And one, one yeah. of the big films that I've always read about and I have never seen is a Roger Corman hippie film from 1970 called Gas. And it's spelled G. I think it's 1970. It's spelled G A S dash S dash S dash S dash S exclamation point. 
and it actually has a longer title to it. So I'm going to go find this on the, on uh, the internet while we Roger talk. Roger Corman, 1970. Yeah. Yeah. And that that movie is close to two hours, so we'll start the movie almost immediately. Uh, but I would love to see it. I've never seen it before. Gas, or it became necessary to destroy the world in order to... Uh, I have to click the fucking link. The title so long. Save it. 1970. Directed by Roger Corman. And it's uh, written by George uh, Armistad, who is a director as well. He, he directed Miami Blues with uh, Alec Baldwin. And the big bounce. All right, that's is it. Is that where yeah. Alec Baldwin got his start? The Miami Blues? I don't know. I just think that's a terrible uh, show. It was a police show. Uh, well, I'm thinking of a movie from 1990 called Miami Blues. Oh, I'm so stupid. I'm thinking of Hill Street Blues. Never mind. Oh, yeah, Hill Street Blues. That one that we created. <laughs> I'm sure he was. I in found it. gas. Which one do you like? There's many of them. Well, whatever, whatever version works for you. Invite a few oh, okay, friends okay. over to watch the end of the world. Gas. A gas is let loose upon the world that kills anyone over 25 years old. Oh, just uh-huh. made it. Just made it. With Bud Cord. I thought it was Don't Trust Anyone Over 35. That was probably Riot in the Streets or whatever. Wild in the Streets. Uh-huh. But that was uh-huh. a typical hippie's phrase. And also, yeah. uh, what was the, the science fiction movie? Logan's Run. People died yeah. died when they turned thirty or something. Like that. Wow! So that's uh, yeah. We got a lot to I, chew on. They yeah. would go to carnival and right. be killed. Oh, it's part of their religion. Well, the trick is not to go to carnival, and then you can't get killed. Well, that that's a run. That's a run. That's when your palm turns black. That's a big mistake. Oh, be a good kid. So it had nothing to do with my masturbation. Is what you're saying? No, it didn't. Oh, well, then I'm going to keep masturbating. Hey, wait a second. That yeah. crystal in the middle of the palm, I bet you that got in the way of that. I think of it course, enhanced. Those, it would those enhance guys got sex. lucky back then. Yeah, well, if your penis is sensitive, it might help. Do you remember the channel where he got the girl? Do you know the film? Yeah, I've seen the film and I watched the TV show from the 70s. Right, the TV show. Yeah, you were talking about yeah, that. Yeah, I know. I can't, can't yeah, tell Yeah, he would different. go on the channel and that girl, uh, Jessica, just showed up. Was her name Rebecca? It says, oh. I'm sad. My friend went to carnival. He goes, Why are you sad? He was reincarnated. She goes, Don't you know that's a lie? Oh, what? shit. <laughs> I'm a sad man. Okay, I'm digressing. So All people right. can see me at the Broadway Comedy Club, not on Broadway. That'll be the eve of Thanksgiving, 9 30 show, upstairs room. Yeah, I'm headlining. No, that's not true. But I'm in the room where headliners are. Well, that sounds great. Uh, if you are a Mutiny Radio listener, I am hosting the live show here Friday, 8 o'clock. It's the Hell Hat. It is a hat with pieces of slips of paper with suggestions and fragments and thoughts written on it. The comedian pulls out a random piece of paper and has to do a bit based on the bit he pulled out, he or she pulled out. Huh. I'll be hosting that, and you can listen to that live uh, this Friday on Mutiny Radio uh, at 8 o'clock Pacific Standard Time. Carl, thank you so much. Uh, it's been a thank pleasure. Thank you, Mike. And thanks for doing all the research and actually watching the movie beforehand and being yeah. pro that you and are. And now I'm on to gas. Yeah, and we did not get accepted into the San Francisco Sketch Fest, but oh. that's all right. We'll, 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 we'll want to do it in the East Coast so Carl can join us. So okay. we can do it with you. Yeah, I could do it with you. The Royal We, I could do it with you. That's what I'm, to say. I'm there. Yeah. 